I thought this this one could be a little bit different because there's so there's so much information out there. There's so many incredible speakers and educators and influencers and um, uh, just just you guys have such a, a plethora of educated voices. And I think it's so amazing and I'm, and I'm so happy because I, when I started this, there wasn't very many people out there at all. And um, I was constantly, constantly in a position where I had to, uh, you know, show, show how this is valid, um, especially with my vet hospital, show, show, show how it's valid, show proof that it's working. It was a it was a struggle to have a voice back then, really. Um, and then I was really lucky because I got a um, I got a, a column in the Vancouver Sun, and that was super cool because it was one of the first of its kind. And I I took questions from basically people in Vancouver and chose five or six questions and then wrote an article based on based on the questions or column based on the questions and there there was a lot of really really interesting questions about you know raw food diets and was it for real and like this was really this was 1994 so it was really at the very beginning and now I'm finding a lot of the questions are people that are confused, right? Like hearing a bunch of different, a bunch of different things from different people and trying to find their way and who do you listen to and who don't you listen to and who's this and who's that. And I, I, I kind of have to tell them all the time, everybody's right because they see how they see through, how they see things through their lenses. So I believe that in this in this realm of holistic medicine, there's no one right and no one wrong, because you are you are speaking your truth based through your experience. And as you know, if your experience is in formulating your experiences through um, just reading research and and projecting that research and getting that research out into the world, or if it's um, your veterinarian and you've been in the field or you're um, a researcher yourself, or you're a business person or you're whatever, there's, there's such a variety of ways to look at the natural animal health supplement um, world. There's, there's many, many facets of it. And, uh, so I thought, well, wouldn't it, it might be interesting because when I looked at um, the different, the different influencers and different educators, they, they do, they come from a, of a, they come from a space that they've, that they've had experience in. And, and it was very interesting for me to look at those, those categories and realize that I have been, well, have been and am in <clears throat> And all of them. So, you know, I had my own veterinary hospital for many, many, many years. And I am, was an avid, avid researcher and, and presented a lot of research. It was so cool. Uh, I know everybody knows Dr. Jean Dodds. And um, I put out uh, Jean's very, in Canada, her very first endocrinology stuff in, in, in the Vancouver sun and actually got fined for it because the, the association didn't um, recognize her, her lab and whatever it was a bit crazy, but that just goes to show how long ago, but I was always um, advocating for research and taking people's research and putting it out to the public and putting it into newspapers and magazines. And I wrote for Shared Vision, which is a really cool little um, holistic magazine in Vancouver and Common Ground and all kinds of different things. So I've, I've been in that where I've taken other people's research and put it to the world. And then now I'm in cancer research. So I've been in it for four years now at, at um, the University of um, 
Dalhousie University in, in Nova Scotia. And then I've been formulating for a long time, years in my practice, and now uh, on a much larger scale. And with formulating comes something called sourcing. And, you know, the realm of sourcing in itself is a, now we have actually someone in our, in our company, that's all she does. So for the last year, that's all she does is sourcing. A lot of companies, when they source something and they find a great, a great um, ingredient or something that they're comfortable with, whether that's comfortable because it's ethical, comfortable because it's financially doable, comfortable because it's, you know, easily readily available, or there's a lot of different comfort zones. Um, our our philosophy at Adored Beast is we can always do better. And our philosophy in Adored Beast is sort of above all do no harm. And that means to the planet. So um, she has a full-time job with us, constantly looking for ingredients that we can even do better, do better for, do better for your animals, do better for, but really also do better for the world, lower carbon footprints, um, organic, wildcrafted, like we're, it's a full, it's her full-time job, which is very rare in, in a lot of companies, especially companies as big as ours, meaning not like not massive, massive companies, but it's, um, so I've got experience in that. And I've, and I see that through my lens, which is, which is that's that, um, that integrity of, of ethics and, and, and making sure that we're, we're finding and sourcing the, the best ingredients we possibly can. And then the business end and the marketing end. And, and there's, there's a lot of moving parts to this industry, but not a lot of people have had um, experience in all those moving parts. And, and that's not to say that I'm saying that I'm better or not. And in fact, I don't know whether it's a curse or a, or a, or a gift to have that because when you have experience in all those different realms, I think you become more of a control freak and you, you are even more ethical and more, more higher level trying to make sure that every single solitary thing that, that you've actually had experience in is not missed and nothing falls through the cracks and, and you become almost like hyper, I, I become almost hyper dil, um, diligent with, with, with the company. And I'm the same way with my animals. So it's the same way with my, with my patients at my practice. So I just thought that maybe it would be nice to answer some questions. We can, for sure, we always can answer questions about adored beasts in your, in your own personal animals and stuff like we do. But I also thought maybe there's some things that you might want to ask me in on any level, like, like, um, you know, there's, there are, there are companies that, um, that are incredible business people, and they find their way to producing a pet product or a pet nutraceutical or a pet healthcare product. And their only experience in the world is, is business and marketing. They've never been in the trenches with treating animals or um, working with really sick animals or working to see what 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 uh, herb or what mushroom or what nutraceutical actually affects a, a big array of animals, like thousands of animals, not just, you know, a couple animals or their own pets or whatever. So there are really different, different um uh, expertise and different and different opinions. So I thought this might be fun to ask me some questions about the biz, like our business of like, ask me questions about Ordor Beast or ask me questions about what do you have to have to become a manufacturer? What do you have to have to, you know, what qualifications or what, um, you know, what do you actually need to produce a product? There, there's, and I'll, and I'll, I'll only be able to answer it from, like I said, my lens, like what, what we do and, and why we do that. So Stephanie, I'm going to 
sort of leave it over to you now and maybe we can answer some questions for some people. Fantastic. Yeah, let's do it. Lisa's got a question, but she sent me a message here. She doesn't have a mic on her computer, so I'm going to read it for her. Okay. She wants to first off, start off by saying how helpful you have all been towards helping me and help our, helping our dog. I started first with leaky gut protocol due to the dog licking its behind, which had gone on for almost two years. Our vet kept saying fleas or anal glands. We noticed a difference in about five weeks. By then we had started a second round. Upon finishing the second round, I thought we were good to go. However, the licking started again. So on to the third round. I'm still on a leaky gut protocol last weekend, a day and a half after being outside in 103 degree heat at a wedding reception, our dog started licking his paws, all four and belly scratching at his right ear. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've looked, I don't see any fleas. I've bathed, I've sprayed some flea and tick, but there's no relief. I'm really at a loss. I don't smell any corn chip smell or musty smell. I'm not thinking yeast, but I really don't know. We've had to resort to putting a cone on so it's not continuous and reaching out to see if you can help me in any direction that you think might help. Yeah, um, I would do the relief protocol that we have. Can you send it to her, Stephanie, yeah, or I tell can. her on the, on the website? Um, it sounds when, when especially when they're licking their, their anlands or anus or that area, one of the things that's very helpful in the leaky gut um, protocol is the slippery elm, the gut sooth. And uh, it's incredible how, like there's all the mucosal lining and the lining right up to the end of the anus, right? So you, your, that mucosal is, is, is right inside the anus. At, like as soon as you, if you were to put your finger in, it would be right there. And, we know with allergies, with um, inflammatory bowel disease, with so, sort of uh, um, a, an indigestion type of uh, pathology where it's even too acidic, their, their stool or their feces are even too acidic or it produces sort of a, a burning sensation when they defecate or even when they don't, if it, if, even if it's inflamed. Sometimes the, leak, uh, the gut tooth can help like cool down that that track from like mouth to anus is what I say so all the way down it can it can calm and cool that whole that whole track down so it could be that if there was no other symptoms other than him just looking his bum uh, or the in fact does have a leaky gut and that the but also has sort of an environmental allergy that is triggered by heat or maybe walking through something or there's there it sounds like it, it sounds like it's environmental with the heat and being outside and and stuff like that so uh there would be a couple things i would do is i would i would go next on to phytos flora to help to pull out any of the sort of almost like a chelation therapy and then add in those two extra canine probiotics because they have such an incredibly strong immune modulating effect. So if it's an allergy and it's more um, like first thing that you think of, if you were to take him to a vet like that, they would probably put him on prednisone or an antihistamine or venectal P or something to, to bring down the inflammation to sort of just stop the sort of the, the acute reactivity, overreactivity of the body. So Phytos flora, those two canine strains have an immune modulating effect, which means that it doesn't synthetically suppress the immune system, but if the immune system is too high because of an autoimmune reaction, which is like an allergy or, or some kind of um, reactivity to some kind of something in the environment, it doesn't synthetically push it down and suppress it. It actually brings it down to, to a regular level. And then it does the opposite that if it goes too low and you're working with an animal that has a, a compromised immune system, which is too low and gets sort of like, you know, staphylococcus infections really easily, or I was just 
looking at a dog the other day that had pseudomonas, which is pretty intense um, to have topically on the skin bacteria, you'd be wanting to try and make sure that that dog's immune system was stronger. So, but again, mod a modulation, something that does a modulation is, is vital in something like this, because if it goes too low, it brings it up. If it goes too high, it brings it down and it tries to get it into that, that homeostatic balanced state. So Phytos Flora does that. And the part of that of Phytos Flora that does that is the two canine strains. The, the ful uh, fulvic and humic acid though, works like a chelation for detoxification, helps to pull heavy metals, things like that, that might be more, he, because he's on the ground and he's walking through, you know, really hot fields and they're, they're spraying fields right now. And a lot of people are using pesticides and stuff in their gardens and it goes really a far away. Like the wind will pick that stuff up and, and blow it miles or kilometers. And that might help the detoxification process as well. And then I would probably, if that doesn't fix it, or if that doesn't make it substantially better, then I would put him on the yeasty beast protocol and deal with the yeast because sometimes heat can really, really, really trigger yeast. So I would try the yeasty beast protocol, then put him back on the phytos flora, and then I would do one more um, protocol of leaky gut. Awesome, Julie. Thank you so much. All right, Tiffany. Tiffany, if you want to take the mic, it's all yours to ask your question. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Hi. Hi. How are you? I feel like it's been so long. It's just been a month, but seriously. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so mine is more general, and I think it can kind of help people. Instead of running up to the vet, Every time my guy gets some water in his ear and gets an earache and he shakes and then I get some Medicam to throw in there or something, I don't want to do that. Are there natural remedies for one, earaches that I can use? Mm -hmm. And then number two, just pain relief. I have a very old dog. He's 16 year old Westie. He's arthritic. Mm -hmm. They give a Medicaid and Robaxa said, if I go to the vet, he's on jump for joints. He gets that up to four times a day. Yep. Um, I use your go-to if he's having a really bad time to just kind of help soothe him. I just wondered if there's more like natural remedies and pain relief rather than going to Medicam and Robaxa set. Are you in the US or Canada? I'm in Canada, I'm up in Ontario. Okay. Um, well, there's, let's, let's address your, your, your ear dog first. There is, um, the same, the same thing you can do with, um, you can use for pain. You can use your go-to for, for earaches and things like that, for sure. You can, as soon as, as soon as you see it coming on, you can give it three or four times a day for two or three days, just to see if you can try and derail the inflammatory response. But um, a company called Zymox, uh, you can buy stuff online. It's really, really good for swimmers ear and, and dogs that are in the water a lot. It, it works really, really well as a prevention and also as a, as a treatment. They're, they're a, a really, I mean, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't use anything like that long term, like for, you know, every single day for a year or something, because then there's, then, then you're not really addressing the real issue. But if you know for sure that it's coming like a swimmer's ear, like it's coming when you're going in the water. Yeah. It's really helpful. It's a, it's a, it's a great product. So it's called Zymox, Z-Y-M-O-X. And it's got what you want. I think they have one specifically for dogs that swim, but if they don't, you just want, you don't really want the wash that's really liquidy. You would want the Zymox enzyme, it's called enzyme solution, where it's, it's in a little bottle that's kind of like a flat bottle. It doesn't look like a long bottle that you would squirt like an ear cleaner. It's in a, it's in a smaller bottle. And some of them have 
cortisone in them and some of them don't. I always reach for the one that doesn't first, but if you're using Medicam, if you're going in and using Medicam or are they giving you, what are they giving you? What are um, you uh, the equivalent, I guess, dog version of a Robaxa set for a muscle relaxer. That's more for the there. No, I mean for your ears, like if you have to- Oh, the they've med- just so. only ever given Medicam and Medicam. I don't like it. So I tend not to really use it. And So they're just their- giving it like an anti-inflammatory. I so, guess. So I would be using, does it get red and squishy and stuff? Um, It just, uh, it gets red and a bit discharge sometimes. Yeah. A bit of, but- um, Yeah. So I would, I would do, I would do the, the go-to, even if you have to do it for three or four days, three times a day for three or four days, as soon as you see it coming on and order yourself some Zymox. And even if you have, if you have to, I don't like cortisone, but there's one that I think has 0.5%, like a really, really low. If that's all you can get, it would, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have it on hand. And you can use it if, if, if you needed it. That's what I would do from the ear perspective part. Um, as far as the pain relief goes, is, is your dog um, uh, worse when it first gets up or and then can kind of walk out of it? Or is it better when it first gets up and then worse as it walks? it's a it's a little bit of both it definitely is worse when he first gets up um he's been actually toppling over his hind end has gotten so weak um he's since he's been seeing a chiropractor and getting alignments it's also helped um and she says there's a lot of muscle stiffness so we did a round of robaxacet and medicam um which helped him regain the ability to walk. Um, but after that, I stopped those things and I've just been doing chiropractors jump for joints in your go-to. Um, but I do, I can tell when he's having a bad day, if he's either been walking too long or he's just gotten up, he's just really stiff. And he, he looks at the stairs, like, don't make me. Yeah. So I would probably, um, um, try a remedy called Rustox and you can purchase it at where where do you live in Ontario uh in Whippy just outside Toronto um you can order it a lot of health food stores will, will have it and I would try giving him Rustox 200 200c and I would do it like three times a day for two or three days and see if it makes a difference and then you can also get a higher potency of arnica so you could try and get like a, I know, I know this is intense, but even like a 10 M Arnica, but you wouldn't use it all the time. You would maybe use it once a day for two or three days and see if it makes a difference. But um, like if they're that bad, but I also think CBD is really good. Like a really good, good quality zero THC CBD, like organic full spectrum Um I would be, I would be trying him on that because it, it really does help. It really does help with arthritis. Okay. And I, I'm on a a very, very good one, zero THC full spectrum. Okay. The one I take is thousand milligram though. Like it's a, I don't take very much of it. I just take a few drops, but just try and heal. For sure. sure. Zero THC. That's what they've said. Yes. And I can confirm with the company. I can call them again. We'll call the company. Make sure. Um, I think for a Westie, you could easily start with, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a uh, CBD expert, but um, so long as it's okay for animals, ask them, make sure that there's no THC in it. You could start off with 250 milligrams and then you could work up to 500 milligrams. Um, what I know of about just working with it here with the rescue animals, the more often you can give it, it seems the better. So even like if you're starting off and you give it maybe every and give it with food so that or like something fatty if you can or, or with their dinner, like 
it absorbs better when you're when you're eating when they're when when they're eating um even if so let's say you were going to give them like you were working up to 500 milligrams you could do try to do 500 milligrams per day but split it between three doses and i would give the last dose just before you went to bed okay great Thanks, Tiffany. But there's lots of good, there's lots of good CBD companies. Um, uh, I work a lot with Ian uh, with Source CBD with all my rescues, all my horse rescues. So it's it really does make a it really does make a difference with with really severe chronic pain. Okay, fantastic. I will take a look at that. And can you just the rust docs? Can you just spell that for me so I have the right Yep, yeah, it's R H U S and then capital T O X. Wonderful. Okay. Well, this has been great. And I know because so many people have pets that have pain and inflammation. So I hope this was useful for a lot because they just, just never just, know. Does Source CBD ship to Canada? Yeah, he does. Oh, wonderful. Special request. Um, Tiff, since you're in Ontario, you can shop uh, homeop or, yeah, homeopathic, no, yeah, homeopathics on well.ca. That's where I get mine. Or there's a store called Goodness Me. Usually you can find them at the health food store. Oh, that's the other thing I wanted to quickly say to you. Um, uh, does a senior dog need more healthy gut as I give mine more than what's on the side? Ruta Grab is also good for stiffness. So whoever said that, Carol Ann, there's Ruta, Ruta Grab is in our jump for joints. And um, uh, the other thing I was going to say, I saw what I was going to say is if, if, you, uh, if you have to resort to Medicam or um, some kind of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, you really have to, in my opinion, there are times when you have to go to drugs. Like, you I mean, there just mm -hmm. is. I would try everything else. And then if it doesn't work, I would go to the drugs. Like you said, you know, you, you had to. But just remember, even if you're giving drugs, what you can do is you can try to alleviate the symptoms of the drugs, which is what I do here. Like I get rescues in here that can't get off trailers that we have to literally carry into the barn, like two donkeys that we literally carried into the barn or horses that are dragging their back legs or seizuring or whatever. Like we can, we get intense stuff here. And um, you just want to, to try and um, mitigate, like if you, if you have to go to drugs, you go to drugs. So there's two ways of doing it. Either you go put them on drugs and then you load them up with everything else that you can possibly figure out, like the rust talks and the high potency arnicas and the, the CBD and all that. And then you start to do reduce their drugs. So that you've given them some pain relief and then you reduce the drugs as you, as you're increasing all of your other stuff in your toolbox. And then you can see where you can be because there's a lot of times that animals can be on, on, medication that and they're on like a fraction of the recommended dose and vets and pharmacists will say oh well there's no therapeutic value left well yeah there is because if you i've had i've had animals on non-steroidal anti-inflammatories on steroids on lots of different things where your um like thyroid medication where you're, where you're almost on a homeopathic dose even, but it's like they still need that little bit of a boost in whatever that is, whatever drug it is, but you, but you have them on all of these other, other supportive measures. And for me, you don't want an animal. And I, I, I'm anal about animals being in pain. Mm -hmm. So I, like I said, I'll do one of two things. I'll, I'll put them on a drug and then I will support them with all these other things. And then I start to decrease the drug to the point where slowly decrease the drug to the point where I know where they're comfortable or they're not comfortable. Right. The other thing is if they're not on drugs right now, 
then you load them up with everything and, and try to get them out of pain. And if it doesn't work, then you can try a, or if it works a little bit, but not as much as you want, then you can try a lower dose of, of the drug, right? Or, or you, or you don't give it as often, you, you know, you, you, you separate it longer, or you go to every other day, or you just do it once a week, or it, you really can play with, with that, so long as you have a supportive vet, to to make sure that you're not, as my mom would say, throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Meaning, once you go on drugs, or if you have to go on drugs, does not mean that you stop everything else, because that's what people do. They'll do. They'll either they'll either put them on a bunch of holistic stuff, and then they just cold turkey stop their drugs, which is just the worst thing that you can do because 99.9% .9 of the time you get a rebound effect and then you wind up in a way bigger mess than you've ever been in before. But if you have to do drugs, look at the side effects of the drug. So if it's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory or if it's a steroid, you really got to protect the gut lining. You've really got to protect the liver and the kidneys. Those are the things that you've just got, you've got to focus on. So make sure they're on even a little more gut soothe than you would normally even put them on. Um, make sure you're giving them like liver tonic, supporting their mm -hmm. liver, their kidneys and their pancreas. So you make sure that even if you're doing a drug that you're, you're supporting the organs or, or the, the, the anatomy or the, the, the system that the drug is really harsh on. So that's, that's what I do. And you can have, you can have an animal on when an animal's old, when an animal's getting to a place where they are really old or they've had a really hard life and they're, they've, they're prematurely old and they don't have, you know, the life expectancy that, you know, a young, a young animal would have, you really have there, you really should, I think personally, it's important to find that balance to give them quality of life. And you can do that without not having to give them drugs, but you have to make sure that you keep them on supportive, holistic stuff. Great. Well, and that's now that you said about the drugs, because I've been feeling he might need a little bit of something um, lately. I, I like the idea of balance. I use a ton of the holistic stuff. He is on um, gut soothe and liver tonic daily. So if I go on the drugs and I would just bump that up on the top. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And is it like bumping up to a, a double dose? No, or? I would go like no. a quarter more. Okay. A qu okay. Quarter more. Yeah, yeah. See how he does. If he doesn't have any like, you know, soft poops or anything like that, then you could go to one and a half times the amount. Okay. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so, so much. I You're appreciate welcome. it as always. You're and welcome. have a great night. You too. Thanks. Thanks. That was a good one. I think that was helpful for a lot of people. Peter, you're next. Let me give you. Someone homeopathic remedy to get rid of Lyme. There's a Lyme question there too. At some point, we should we should sure. try and talk about. Peter, can you? Um, is your mic working? If not, I'll ask the question for you here. Um, he's got a two and a half year old pit that has a chronic skin infection, probably from allergies caused by too many vaccines. He just has, he just has his mic shot. He's got his, he's muted. Yeah, I can't unmute it. No, can he unmute it? Peter, can you hear us? No, I can't get it to go. Um, they give her good supplements, including Safety and Duoxo shampoo mm -hmm. and Trisclor four wipes, which help. Not sure if those topicals are doing damage to her skin. I'd like to know if there are natural topical alternatives. Sometimes what she gets she skin infections, chronic skin infections. And she's two? She's two and a half. Sometimes the vet finds high levels of bacteria. We've done some rounds of antibiotics. We'd rather use natural medicine. Basically asking if there's natural alternatives to Duoxo and Trisclor. Well, there is. Um, but 
for a two-year-old pity to have that mm, a skin infection or skin disease to that level where she needs to have all that stuff that is telling me that it's a, it's something much deeper than anything topical. Like I would, I don't know if you've been addressing her gut, but a hundred percent, that's what you should, what would be the most helpful is, you know, what is she eating diet? Um, and with pities, it could be a couple of things, but if there's a lot of uh, bacteria, like if she's, if she's getting a lot of bacterial infections, that normally means that she's got a low, a low immune system, which is often caused because she's got leaky gut, uh, or she's got a double whammy where she's got leaky gut and she's got an autoimmune and then she itches and then she gets secondary staphylococcus and things like that on her skin. But there is topical stuff. We have a topical mask that that Stephanie can put in the chat. Um, I would I would try that. I would try putting topical masks on her. And but um, if you haven't addressed her her micro her microbiome in her gut and uh, made sure that her that you're focusing on her the foundation of her immune system, which is her gut that would be something that would be like primary that or like prime to do before you even do anything else is really, really focus on her diet and on her gut. Um, you know, they can get things like folliculitis a lot, though that breed, which is infection again, which means it's that they're, they're, you know, susceptible to having an immune system and the follicles get um, blocked and they get a particular type of bacteria and that can be really painful and itchy and sore and stinky and, and awful, very painful. But again, I would be looking at her gut for sure. And then um, putting in the topical mask on and trying to stay away from as many chemicals as you possibly can topically because her, Micro, her microbiome on her skin is equally as important as the microbiome in her gut. So when you do antibiotics and drugs, you, you destroy the, that, those helpers and that defense mechanism for skin disease in her gut. And when you put topical stuff on, you're destroying the, the environmental, topical environment to, that protects her against secondary bacterial infections. So I would be really looking at uh, supporting and strengthening her micro microbiome in her gut and on her skin. Perfect, Julie, thanks. And for everyone, I put the link to the topical mask in the chat for everyone. Just copy and paste it to a notepad for yourself or you can jot it down real quick. Jim's got a question. We've talked to Jim in the past, Julie. Okay. You still here, Jim, or did I, did we lose you? Oh, there you are. Jim, if, um, am I remembering correctly that your mic doesn't work? Yeah, maybe that's the case. Okay, that's all right. Uh, Jim's got a Tibetan Terrier, 13 years young, small bump, about the size of a small pea, just on top of his incisive papilla. It is slightly swollen and sore and has been this way for several months. Is there a homeopathic remedy we could use to help this? He's recently been blood tested by Dr. Gene Dodds. His wow. liver and kidney levels were slightly high. Thyroid was low. We have him on two milligrams of thyroxine. He's 28 pounds. Thank you from Jim and Carol. Okay, I'm just reading. I'm just reading it again, sorry. Thyroxine, okay. I need to kind of ask more questions like, does it bother him at any time? Is he, is he um, like irritated by it? Is it inflamed? That would be some questions rather than just a bump. Um, is there a way of him 
responding to that yeah questions let me see if this mike's gonna give us a it says he says he doesn't have a mic um it's sore and swollen and has been this way for several months i don't know if you can type real quick in the chat here yes to all it bothers him and it's inflamed mm -hmm. hmm. there are there are different there's, there's definite i would probably start off with like arnica and and hepper sulf if it's inflamed and it's bothering him um he's 28 pounds how old 13 um that's that would be something that I would start off. But again, for something like that, you don't want it to get really big. I would be, I would be talking, I know she's got a long wait list, but I would be talking to Andrea, Andrea Ring and getting a specific remedy for that. But in the meantime, you can try um, our anti-vax and you could do, you could do a couple things. You could do anti-vax, our go-to, and then you could go and get a remedy called Hepersulf 30C, and you could add that, and you could try the anti-vax twice a day for three days. No, I would do, no, I would actually go your go-to twice a day for three days. Then I would do anti-vax twice a day for three days, and then Hepersulf 30C twice a day for three days. And see and see how that goes. Um, definitely, I would be having that that dog on um, phytosynergy, and I would do phytosynergy probably three times a day because it's it's in the superoxide dismutase in it does really incredible things. And in any kind of tumors at all, I would be doing our turkey tail. We've had we've had pictures and a a stuff like the the turkey tail tincture that we have now from like biome we've got pictures people sending in of of little growths and tumors literally disappearing after two weeks it's kind of crazy but i would be trying that as well perfect julie thanks yeah it's pretty incredible stuff <laughs> well you just don't want something that's irrit a 12 year old dog you're trying to avoid surgery if you can you also don't want them to be in pain and like stop eating um, you, you just want to try and nip that in the bud before it gets really bad. Awesome. Thank you, Julie. Welcome. Lisa, let's see here. Oh, Andrea's on the call. I just saw her name there. Oh. Hey, Lisa, is your mic, is your mic working? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, great. Hi, Julie. How are Hi, you? Hi, good. How are you? I haven't seen you in so long. Um, oh, yes. I want to give you a big thank you because my dog Dakota is still alive thanks to you. She's 12 oh. years old now. Oh. Yes. Um, uh, she, I, I'm sure you remember her. I think she was one of your hard cases to heal. Yeah. I was like, Lisa, come on. How do I, why do I know that? That's like a name from the past. <laughs> yes. I think she was four years old when she got so sick because of all them steroids, remember? I do remember. I do yeah. remember. She had Aww. the pseudomonas bacteria and she had all that messy yeast all over her body and your yeasty protocol just healed her. Yeah, oh. I remember that. And she's yeah. 12 now. That's awesome. She just turned 12 years old. So Aww. what I wanted to know, her ALPK was at 384. Yeah. Which wasn't didn't seem to be too concerning but i was just hoping that um whether liver tonic or milk thistle should i add that into her diet yes that would the liver tonic would see i don't I like just using milk thistle because i feel like you're ignoring the rest of the team that supports the liver okay so liver tonic supports the kidneys the gallbladder the pancreas and those, all of those detoxifying organs are, are is super important to support when you're looking at some, you know, elevated liver enzymes and stuff. I don't, or even elevated kidneys, I would be supporting the liver. So that's why okay. I, 
as well as the kidneys. That's why the liver tonic has, has it all in it. It's got Berberus, Chelidonium, Curtis Marianus. It's got Interaxicum. So it has, it has dandelion, milk thistle, Chelidonium and, and, and bayberry. So Berberus. So they, all four of those affect and support all of those organs. So okay. I would definitely do that. And your other part was, would, would I do the mushrooms with her? For sure. Yes. Yeah. And I just heard you say about the mushrooms. She has these little tiny circular, it almost looks like moles, but I don't think they're moles. And she's getting a few extra on her body, like behind her back her neck, she has one on her leg, one on her knee. Mm -hmm. And you were just saying that the mushrooms could potentially help that. Yeah, we've had we've had some really great um, testimonials in a very short period of time of growths and lumps and bumps and things like that disappearing, getting smaller, going from really hard to soft and then and then basically resolving. So wow. Yeah, I would try it. And it's amazing for the gut. It's incredible. Yeah, well, she can, she can have enough gut support with as much. She has zero immune system, if you remember. Yeah, so I do. It's very, yeah. very important for her immune system to stay strong. Now, yeah. she's on so many things. She's on your phytosynergy, the gut suit, the, the, all of it. Yeah. <clears throat> but I'm just wondering, um, do you need to start separating things like the the the... What should, the liver tonic should that be given at a separate time than everything else no you know why why because consistency is more important than driving yourself crazy like <laughs> well, um when i'm feeding when i'm feeding my animals in the morning like i have a a prep table just for my animals like it's this big huge long uh stainless steel table and we have something similar down in the barn for all the horses just everything goes in all at the same time and it's just done. It's just way easier to remember. Um, it, they're all synergistic. They all, they all are completely complementary with each other. So you don't, you don't have to worry. Okay, good. Cause with milk thistle with a human, they say to kind of spread it two hours after supplements. So I just wanted to make sure you know, that yeah. it wasn't an issue. It's fine. I've never, we've never, we, we use that formula in our vet hospital for, oh my gosh, I don't know, 18 years. And we always just told people either just to put it right in their mouth or in their food. And it had, yeah. we had, we've had, I mean, Steph, we, even with the door, um, the adorable apothecary, we have so many people writing in saying our dog's liver enzymes were like just crazy, crazy high, like 1700 and 3100. Oh, wow. And, and now are back to normal. So okay. um, in a case like that, in a dog that's 12, and especially if she's immune compromised, mm -hmm. I would be keeping her on that until, I don't know, it's almost like it's something that isn't going to hurt her that I would leave her on long, probably long term. Long term. Yeah. So the liver tonic, how, how many times a day would you give it? And do I have to have any concern with that ALPK being at 384? Because we were always concerned about Cushion's disease where she had zero immune system left. I know. Well, no, you know what? Don't don't worry. Don't freak out. Just put her on it. Yeah. yeah. I would put her on it twice, two or three times a day and mm -hmm. then just recheck her levels. Keep her on it and recheck her levels in three months. Okay. I mean, and unless all is, of a sudden she starts drinking way, way more or something that would show that they're getting worse. Well, she got diagnosed with Lyme disease last year too. Okay. So we kind of have an issue there too. Sometimes she'll have like more appetite, increased thirst or lameness because of it. But the antibiotics yeah. they put her on for that entire month did help and yeah. it hasn't kind of resumed. So I'm just we're keeping that kind of at bay. And yeah. CBD oil, she's on that as well. And I give her my kind, which is made by Aurora. And it's like not, it's not 0% THC. It's like 0 0.1 THC. Mm -hmm. Is that still safe to give? It is. Okay. Because yeah. I give her about four cc's twice a day. Yeah, I don't know how much four cc's, how many milligrams that is though, but Okay. She's doing well on it. Don't worry about it. But mm -hmm. phytosynergy and the um, phytosynergy and the turkey tail 
yeah. is really helpful with Lyme. Like is really, it? really, really helpful with Lyme. So fibrous yeah. energy, I was only giving once a day. I could give it more than once a day? Oh, yeah. Okay. Vital synergy is phenomenal for muscle metabolizing, like for the metabolic system of the muscle. Okay. Um, helps for regeneration and healthy aging. And it's a, it's an incredible, we're going to be putting something on the website soon. We're going to put like a graphics on a bunch of different research that's been done with, with, um, with our particular strain of, of phytoplankton. And it's, it is a, it's a really, it's a pretty phenomenal, I think it saved, I, I truthfully think it saved my life. I got really, really sick three years ago and um, I, I recovered really well. And I, I swear it was that I was taking it four or five times a day. And really? uh, yeah, yeah, wow. it, it really helped me. And I've, I've been taking the turkey tail. I have a hard time sleeping and um uh it's helped me it's helped my sleep phenomenally it's it's incredible oh so you so, can even take it yourself oh yeah because i would need help for sleep <laughs> yeah i never thought i was just started taking it to see just for like overall health and it's like and fast too like within a week i thought oh my i'm like sleeping way better. Like, what am I taking? What have I started? <laughs> what am I doing? And because I don't want to stop. Um, and it, that's, a, that's what it was. It was like, it was very interesting. I didn't think it was going to be, it, I didn't think it would help me with that, but it has. It, it, I think what it does, I think what mushrooms do, I think mushrooms are very, um, I mean, think about what they do, right? They, 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 move through the forest and they they they're sort of the, the the communicator for trees right and they they deliver different kinds of gases and chemicals and nutrients under the soil to different trees that is um delegated to them by the mother tree it's one of their it's one of their jobs so it would make sense that when you would take it it would go to whatever needed Need, where your body needs it right yeah. so yeah, yeah it, was, it was kind of cool and anyways so, it was very nice to talk to you how would i know what doses to give her she's 72 pounds um stephanie can give that to you i mean it would, be, it would be it would be 72 drops but we actually now have that in like that's half a teaspoon or mm. i don't know oh, okay Steph Steph can give that to you it's and on it's the like website twice a, day, twice a day okay you guys can tell me that just one last thing one thing that I found very strange that happened to her like maybe a month ago is she was laying on the couch and she all of a sudden just had this stare down and she wasn't like there. You would talk to her, but she wasn't she wasn't like uh, there. And so to me, she had some kind of a seizure and she kind of like grabbed down with her nails, like right down into the, the sofa. And I really just had to hold her down and just say, you know, you just need to calm down. So she had some kind of a weird seizure that never happened before. Mm -hmm. So I had gave her CBD oil and the yes. Arnica Actinite right away. And it only okay. lasted hardly like maybe 30 seconds. But mm. any ideas of what could cause that? Like that could be a liver thing. I don't know, but liver can do that. I would be getting, yeah, definitely be addressing her, her liver. Yeah, well, we just had blood work done afterwards. Yeah. And that's when we found that the ALPK was at 384, but they said yeah. it's really not that high, but could it, do you think that it could have still been the liver? Possibly. It's hard to say. No, it's hard yeah. to say. It's hard to say, but liver tonic should help. Liver tonic and the turkey tail. Okay, yep. I'll, I'll be doing both. Thank you very okay, much. And I have to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart because I still wouldn't have my girl if it wasn't for you. Oh, well, I'm so happy to hear that she's still, still, that's a picture of her, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. She's still swimming in the pool. We're going for walks twice a day. <laughs> it's amazing. So awesome. It is. That's great. Thank well, it's you. nice to talk to you. Yes. Thanks. And keep up the good work. You're saving a lot of animals. Thank you. Okay. Oh, that's nice. That, a blast from the past. Wow. Um, so Judy has a good question and I asked you about this a little bit earlier, but I haven't had a chance to post it in our community. 
Okay. She, she wants you to, she wants to know about understanding the CFU difference yep. in Fido's and for example, our love bugs. Yep. Could you talk a little bit about that, Julie? Yeah, for sure. So I think Fido's is a completely different um, product than, than the rest of our probiotics, which would be healthy gut, love bugs, and um, uh, gut soothe. And also our, our like feline gut soothe and, and our um, uh, easy peasy. And the reason is, is because of the two specific canine strains. So I know you've heard me talk a lot about um, the overcultured canine, and I know you you know that I that I that I believe heavily in like in in a homeostasis and pro and protecting the the um, uh, sort of like the environmental balance. So when we researched the, the canine strains, we, they went through years and years and years of rigorous, rigorous research. And it is uh, shown to be able to withstand the, the, the acidity level of a dog's gut. Now, we don't know that exact same research for any of the human probiotics out there that is in every other pet supplement out there. So using 30 billion colony forming, colony forming units, what we're in 14 strains, the idea is that we're giving a diverse amount of different kinds of, of uh, species and we're giving a high enough colony forming unit that we're hopeful will surpass and live and stay in that acid level of a, of a dog's gut. So with, with the two canine strains, it showed that 1 billion colony forming units was the, the, the prime, um, that was, that was my personal prime amount that proved in, in, in vitro studies and in live studies to withstand and colonize right from right from top to bottom so that we weren't concerned that we weren't um it went it went it proved that it went to the area of the gut and lived there where it was supposed to go so it's going to its targeted area so when we did this we looked at those two bacterias and I didn't want to overpopulate and push those bacteria out. So when you're when you're thinking of a like when you're thinking of a garden or when you're thinking of um, something that's going to carry something through a war zone, which you could look at as the acidity level of a gut, you want to make sure that you're not pushing those saviors out of the lifeboat. So you don't want to, if you have a, if you have a boat or a lifeboat or a, a wild flower garden, you're not, if you really, really, really want, um, let's say calendula to grow in your garden, but then you also want a nice diverse, um, garden with all other different kinds of wildflowers. You're not going to plant tons and tons and tons of wildflowers so that and then not and overpopulate the calendula so that the calendula doesn't grow. So that's why we've matched the same amount of colony forming units with the 14 strains as we did with the phytos flora because we're trying to find that that balance that homeostasis that 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 sweet spot where they grow together and that the two strains actually support the growth of the other 14 strains. So I, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, totally. And it's nice for me to hear it again, since you explained it to me the other day and all I've made a note to post that information 
in our okay. Facebook community tomorrow, okay. just so everyone can understand. Uh, good question. Yeah, Judy. it's a really, really excellent question because you yeah. look at it, you see 30 billion colony forming units, and then you see 1 billion colony forming units or two in total. Um, but there's definitely, definitely a research based reason why and a an ecological reason why and an, a diverse a diverse ecosystem reason behind that. Because when we put 30 billion colony forming units of all 14 strains, I've put in a really balanced amount of each one of those species so that they don't over colonize or push one out. And I've looked at them and gone, okay, this one is, you know, known to be a bit more um, uh, persuasive than this one. So I've, I've, I've chosen them in, in the amounts within that 30 billion in order for them to grow um, happily together and support each other in their, in their growth. And I've done the same thing with the, the Phytos flora, two canine strains, and then the 14 strains. Awesome, thank you. Welcome. I hate to say it, but we I are- I just wanted to say there's another dog, was another dog here about Lyme. Um, is antibiotics for a dog that she that may have vaccine up? Uh, where is it? Oh, I was just trying to really, there's you another, there's, there's another, um, let's see if you have a question about Lyme, could you, would you mind? Well, I'll, it? I just, there was a dog that, that was, that had con that was exposed to Lyme, but didn't have symptoms. And I was going to say, I, I was going to just mention with that, the turkey tail, the turkey tail and the, um, phytosynergy, because, Sometimes Lyme can lie dormant, right? And then what happens is that when the animal or the person becomes um, stressed or overwhelmed or overworked or there's some kind of stress situation happening or just even older, it can raise its ugly head. So in order to address the biofilm in the, in the, in the protozoa and you want to try and make sure that the muscle metabolism is really, really strong because that's kind of where they hide. They can hide in the muscles. Well, they can hide in, it can hide anywhere. Um, but that would be two things that I would be living on if I was concerned at, on any level that there was a, a dormant lime there somewhere or an exposure to lime and your animals just at the, at a point or you're at a point where your immune system is strong enough that it's just not affecting you. But if we know for sure that there's been an exposure and you're at all worried, I would be definitely using those two products. They, they are, they're really, really good. They're very helpful for that. Um, uh, and let me just like this for Turkey tail is there a period of time to be on then taking a break, dominate, Taking a break, no dominating reason for other than he's 14, Jack Russell. Um, mushrooms, mushrooms are food. So there's, again, it's, it's really interesting. I love rotation. I love changing things. I really like um, experimenting with stuff and, and, you know, giving the body something and then giving it something new and then giving it something new again and then taking that out and putting that back in. It gives, it gives that nice, um, you know, it, it gives the body something to wake up to and look at and, and remember and get re-triggered and stuff. So that's, that's, that's really super cool when you're dealing with something that's healthy, but I like that. But what I like even more <laughs> is um, seeing an animal that is on something and they're 14 years old and they're vibrant and they're healthy and they're running around. I always say, I don't like to rock the boat. If, if, if you're on something and it's doing well and they're older or they're compromised or they've had some kind of issues, I, I'm, not, I'm not really concerned about keeping um, them on something, especially something that is um, 
um, like, um, like a, like, oh, like a, a food product, right? So that would be phytosynergy and turkey tail. And we're coming out with um, chaga soon. And that's something you could do is you could, our idea or mycoviome's idea of, of mushrooms is that we're going to have a, an array of mushrooms, single, say just single mushrooms. We're not going to, we're not going to have a combination mushroom mix specifically for that so that you can rotate your mushrooms um, and they can be targeted for specific uh, physiological parts of, of the whole system. But don't worry about keeping them on it too long or keep, you know, you know, should you rotate it or should you, if they're doing well on it, you can leave them on it. They're, they're, they're just mushrooms. Mm -hmm. um, and were you going to ask me something else? Yeah, I wanted to, one of our community members, Sharon, she's, she wanted to ask a question. She's been asking me in the group here and I was wondering, could I give her the mic quick? Yeah, I'm just looking at 18 year old Dash on New York. Hi. 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 I've been very, very perplexed. Um, and I really thank you for taking my question. Question. I have a three-year-old German Shepherd, spayed female. And since she was six months old, she has been licking her paws. It started with one paw, then it, you know, traveled to all the paws and then the bloody redness between them. And then the chewing of the nails as well. And this has gotten worse and worse. And then at night she's up uh, doing that. So I was directed by a friend of mine who's homopathic, and I even have a vet now whose wife is a certified um, nutritionist. She directed me toward your products. So I started out with the, um, the leak, not leaky gut, but the yeasty beast. We did that. And then we went into the leaky gut. No improvement, none. And uh, I don't know what to do because she's on raw for over a year now, year and a half, just raw because I was told kibble has sugar and it's probably a yeast problem. Uh, we do live in Florida. So the weather's hot and it's moist. We're having a lot of rain, especially these last couple of months. And uh, so I got to the point, the doctor just said to me, you know, I think she's just gonna have to get an injection. I said, well, of what? And he said, side point. So we did the side point. All right, 24 hours ago, we did side point. She's been fine. Now, tonight, she's starting to lick again. <laughs> After 24 hours? Yes. Yeah. And um, she's two, she's two years old. She's three. She's spayed. Mm. Yeah. And she's gained 10 pounds in the last six months with, with no change in diet. So he said, well, now check her thyroid. Her thyroid. Yes. Yeah. So and now she started thyroid medicine today as well. So she had a low thyroid? I don't know. He, he thinks. They did the blood work, but he said, well, it didn't show the definitive um, thyroid test. It did the one test, he said. So he thinks because of the 10 pound gain suddenly, that it's gotta be her thyroid. So he automatically started me on the medicine. So I don't know what, I, he said not to give her anything else. Let's see if the cytopoint is actually going to work. And I kind of understand his viewpoint, but in the yeah. meantime, I don't know, you know, <laughs> what to do here. It's, it's just, you know, it's not really, is she care. limpy at all? Like, does she limp or? No, she... no, her coat is absolutely gorgeous. There's no loss of hair. She's got a shiny coat, beautiful eyes, everything. Everything looks perfect. Mm -hmm. And she's three. Well, I mean, I have lots of different opinions on that, right? I mean, th that's why I was like, you know, definitely check her thyroid. But um, a dog that's three years old that has hypothyroid is, is, there's something wrong, you know, like a dog shouldn't be three years old with thyroid disease. It, it could be something like a immune mediated thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune, um, an autoimmune disease. Did you, did you go through the whole leaky gut protocol? You did. I, did. Right? I, I used the whole yeah. thing and then I went into, yeah. then we stopped because I didn't know what else to do. Yeah. You know, and then I read, somebody said in your uh, collective on Facebook, to try Mercola's uh, fermented mushroom. And yeah. I got Flora's uh, phytoflora. That yeah. started her bowel problem. She started to get very gassy and loose bowels. So I stopped that. And Did you I, start both of them? Did you start the, the mushroom powder and phytoflora together? Yes. Mm. Yes. 
So I took her off everything, realizing I'm going to have to get her back to the vet. Took her off for two weeks, nothing, not even the enzymes. We were doing zeolite. We were doing flaxseed. Oh my gosh, what else were we doing? It just, there's so many and different products. So now she's on nothing, right? Right. Because I thought, well, let's just see if this thing is going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I actually think that's a good idea considering she's three. Um to, to see if the, I mean, the thyroid is going to take more than a day to, to show a difference. I would, I would do that, but if it does help and, and, it, and you're like, oh, okay. So obviously she's, she's thyroid deficient or there's something wrong with her thyroid. Then I would be, I'd be seriously looking at, um, things that are, are immune modulating like really, really immune modulating. So, I mean, I would try phytosflora again, separate from anything else. That's the other thing is I would put in one thing at a time. So if you add something back in, add it in and leave it just that one thing for two weeks, then add, and if she's fine, then add another thing for two weeks. And then if she's fine, add another thing two weeks later and, and see how it goes. But I, I agree with your vet. I think you're gonna, you're gonna have to actually, cause if you, if you, if you don't, you're really not going to know whether the thyroid medication is working or not. Do you think the thyroid is, is connected to this whole itching situation? Oh, it can be. Oh, oh yeah. really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Cause he said it will take a long time. You know, we should this one little pill every day and <laughs> For a month he's he said he's going to mod uh, he's going to have the office call me every week just to, mm -hmm. and i'm keeping a journal so wow i didn't know it, was, it could be connected so, oh yeah all right hmm yeah. wow well good luck but i think i think that um definitely definitely if it does make a difference and if like you said his her thyroid wasn't really really low you said he said which would, which would point a bit more to like a, um, an immune mediated thyroiditis if, if it really was that she was affected by the thyroid medication. So it sounds like he knows what he's doing for sure. So I would, and this is the vet that has the wife that is a nutritionist. Yes. yes. She's the okay. one who told me to get rid of all the kibble, even though I was giving a very high priced product. Yeah. She told me to go strictly raw. We, we, do our, we started out with cool foods like duck. Then she said, fine, get rid of all the fowl, no feathered animals at all. We mm -hmm. did two scans with Glacier Peak. Yeah. 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 And it's showing like in the second one, virus showed up and uh, some other things. So inflammation of some sort. So I don't know, you know, dogs can't talk and she's right now going after her paws again. <laughs> Ugh. Did she know that? Yes, he told me I had been washing the paws every morning originally with Providine uh, rinse, and then I started to use Epsom salts. That helped just for an hour, then she's back at it. And then he said, well, try green tea. Just make a green tea solution, wipe her feet every day. It's been raining for days here. And so, you know, I do wipe the feet, but she's back at it and she doesn't sleep because of this. And then she pants and pants and wakes everybody up and she's uncomfortable. And yeah. also she licks her vulva area like crazy, but there's nothing going on down there either, which we had your analysis done. She's fine. <sighs> so that's it. Hmm. Almost sounds like, like, again, he sounds like he really knows what he's talking about, but it almost sounds hormonal. Like thyroid, thyroid is definitely in that hormonal, um, in mm -hmm. that hormonal realm. Right. So, so if she was, you know, if she spayed, this all happened early on. I mean, this could be like a sex organ thing, right? This could be like a, a lack of cortisone. Well, a lack started, of, I'm sorry. Pardon? It start. she was spayed at 19 months. She started to itch at six months, six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it just got worse and worse. So, I mean, the last couple of months, it's been really bad. Of course, with the heat of the the Florida weather, you know, and a lot of rain. It's just so wet out there now. But you know what? When you're when you're at where you're at, it's almost like what comes first, the chicken or the egg. So <laughs> yeah. 
did she did she have leaky gut syndrome at six months of age because her mom didn't have a really strong microbiome in her gut and didn't pass a really strong microbiome on her puppy right and then Mm -hmm. every this is important to for everyone to remember your gut bacteria creates all the metabolites even for your sex hormones like it it is, it is, it's what creates, it, it produces vitamins. It produces, it, it is a, it's so, so, so important. So I think if she was six months old and she started itching, I would say that there's something wrong. And if she's got a thyroid disease right now, chances are she's got like an immune mediated thyroiditis where it, 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 it's been triggered from chronic, chronic inflammation where her body, her bloodstream has been reactive from a very young age because she hasn't had the the proper bacteria in her gut. But once, once you you guys decide what you're doing and stuff, ask your vet if you, if you could do like a topical, like a topical mask, you know, instead of wiping her feet with like um, a chemical or something, uh, maybe stick her feet right in, in the mask, like put her in the bathtub or put, you know, just get little cups and mix, mix like the phytos flora with um, kefir or yogurt and stick her finger, her feet right in and then put some socks on her feet to see if you can, um, you know, so that she doesn't lick it off. I mean, if she licks it off, right. it doesn't hurt. It's not going to hurt her. Hmm. But but then she starts licking again. And like I said, I wouldn't start anything when you're starting this now. But if she's that that stressed, I would look at trying to break the stress hormone. And what probably breaks the stress hormone better than anything is 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 cbd like it it works really fast cbd i've been wondering about that Uh cbd and our Mm go-to our our homeopathic go-to um the combination of those two just to try to break that that intense intense Mm -hmm. high cortisol almost repetitive behavior that can happen from stuff like that how would i know about uh, how would i know about the dosage for stuff like that um, well, there's like, I, like I said, you're in the U S I really like source CBD, mm-hmm. uh, the, the directions and the, and the stuff would be on that from that company. Source. And then, and then the homeopathic, um, um, go-to you can give it sort of when they're really, really intensely licking, you can give it every, you know, give it, give it again in an hour, give it again in an hour later. You can give it sort of every hour for three hours, and then you can do it maybe once or twice a day for a couple of days. But again, make sure that your vet knows what you're doing and what's okay. going on and really try and work with them so that you have some idea or else you are, you're going to get into that wheel of not knowing what's doing what. Right. Well, thank you. I know it's a complicated oh, issue and there's no easy answer. So thank you for your time. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you. Somewhat. I'm just trying to look at this um, 18-year-old dash hound, oh, Yorkie female who is experiencing canine cognitive dysfunction, pacing at night, some whining. Is she still there? Can you find who, out? Who's her name, Julie? Katie. Katie, are you still here? Katie. Yeah, I see a Katie here. Stiff. Anything to help her? I'm here. Okay. Hi, Katie. Hi. So did she just start this pacing stuff? Um, It's been going on maybe throughout this last year. Um, She, yeah, the pacing, she does circles um, most of the time. And sometimes at night, you know, she'll whine a little bit. She gets a little spooled up at night. But, you know, she's raw fed, all of her labs come back fabulous. She eats well. She still likes to, you know, go on walks and, and do stuff like that. She's not in any pain. She has the, you know, intervertebral disc disease, but mm-hmm. she's not in any pain or anything. And at one point I tried some um, hemp 
choose, but that spooled her up. Hemp. So, Hemp. H e m p. Hemp. Yeah, what did it do? What did it do to her? It spooled her up. She walked, paced circles for hours oh. when I gave her that. So I, I did that just a couple of times, and it's like, well, that's not what I want. So I stopped. No. You know that. That's interesting that that would do that. Um, there's there's some there's two. There is she on any kind of like um. We were just talking about this today with DHA. Is she on any kind of like a omega-3 oil? No, she's completely raw and has been for about the last six years, but I don't supplement with any omega-3s. Okay. Um, she does get, you know, sardines um, in water once a week mm -hmm. um, okay. along with, you know, a mix of different proteins and everything. Yeah. So there's, there's, are you, are you looking at her gut? her like are, um, you, are you giving her anything for her gut bacteria no i'm not because there's like the, the gut brain access right mm -hmm. so it's there's there's been so many studies with cognitive dysfunction and having um the right kind of bacteria in the gut Mm -hmm. I, I would, and I'm, and I'm not just saying just go gut, like everything's just gut, but definitely, definitely anxiety, Alzheimer's, they're, they're, they're doing a study right now with a particular bacteria with Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And so there is, there is definitely a correlation between, between an unhealthy gut bacteria mm -hmm. and cognitive dysfunction for sure. So I, I would be looking at doing something with her gut, giving her some, some, you know, like first thing I'm thinking of is Phytos flora. If you're going to pick one, just because of the canine strain in it. Um, Phytos flora. Okay. Yeah. Phytos flora. And then I would, I would be, there's, there's a homeopathic remedy called causticum. Um, there's two causticum and burrito carb that we used a lot for, for canine cognitive dysfunction at, at our, okay. at our clinic. And okay. you could, again, I mean, I'll bet you, um, I mean, she's so, so booked up. I, she's going to kill me because I know she's on here, but um, our Andrea Ring would probably be able to help you with a homeopathic remedy for her okay. to help just, especially to be just giving, sometimes just giving it to her at night, but until mm -hmm. she could help you if you if you wanted to you could try her on some phytos flora and then order our one remedy called um your go-to and just try giving her one dose of it um before you go to bed before the whining starts mm -hmm. does it start at a certain time no and she doesn't do it all the time but in the last maybe week or two it's been a little bit, you know, more often, but normally she just, you know, she'll pace when she's not sleep, you know, she sleeps a lot, but we still go out for walks and stuff. And she likes being in the backyard with me, you know, out there yeah. with her. Um, but I just, I want her to be, you know, comfortable and relaxed and not, you know, pacing and whining. No kidding. Yeah. That, that would be not fun to watch. So I would, I would, if, Stephanie can put Andrea's um, contact in there, but I would, okay. I would try her just for now. I would try her on some Phytos flora and just to get a better diversity of gut bacteria in her gut. And then I would, I would try her on some um, uh, go-to on the go-to remedy okay. and okay. just give it to her at night before you go to bed. See if it calms it, not just, not just calms it down, but, but see also maybe if she's a little less stiff when you're using mm -hmm. it um, mm -hmm. okay. and um, you know, see if her, if her weakness is a little bit better, but I would be thinking of a remedy called causticum and uh, you know, maybe Andrea can, you can get a hold of Andrea and she can just send you some, right. All and right. she's even maybe do sort of a shorter acute thing. And if it doesn't work, then maybe she could, just to get you going on something and okay. then, and then book another appointment for a longer appointment. I know she's really, really, really booked up, but okay. I just, when I dash downs are very, are very near and dear 
to me. <laughs> I was reading that. It's like, oh, oh my gosh. Um, um, I ordered, um, I haven't even received it yet this week. Senna Life, is that worth using or should I just return it when it gets here? Senna Life? Mm -hmm. I don't even know what that is. Oh, it's, it's marketed for dogs, you know, with these conditions that are supposed oh. to help them. Is it natural? So, um, no, it's not. No. No. Uh -uh. And I haven't even received it yet. I think it's supposed to arrive tomorrow. I was just grasping it. I don't have any holistic vets or anything anywhere within a couple hundred miles of me. Um, so well, you know what? Difficult. Just try to get a hold of Andrea. Order order those two things off of our website. Okay. When okay. she's in an episode, like try giving it to her before you go to bed. But definitely, if she's in an episode, give mm -hmm. her some of that. Some give her some of the go to. Okay. And see okay. if that kind of calms her down. And if she's actually in an episode, you could mm -hmm. give it to her every, like give it to her, give it to her again half an hour to an hour later and then okay. again half an hour to an hour later if it doesn't if it doesn't kick in right away it should okay. kick in it should it should it should at least take the edge off a little bit and okay. then um and then andrea can hopefully talk to you about some cost to come and stuff okay that would be great great i Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. And I know you, I mean, I don't like fish oil. I'm not a big fish oil component, mm -hmm. but I mean, um, DHA is definitely something that helps mm -hmm. with, with brain health. Okay. All right. Well, can, may I ask one, one more question? Yeah. I have um, an 11 year old intact um, American Staffordshire Terrier and he's raw fed also. He's never been bred. But about a year ago, he started having a prostate issue and he's on finasteride. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's well controlled with that. He just had his um, labs and everything done yesterday and everything came out excellent. There are no health issues whatsoever. And my question is, um, he's never been bred. I don't plan on breeding him. Um, he's a great temperament, very muscular. Um, he's 72 pounds. It, I don't know, you know, my vet had recommended getting him neutered but I don't don't know that if it's not beneficial I don't want to do it um, but is there something else that I could be doing for the prostate either in place of the he? finasteride he's 11 I and would be in great great shape he looks like he's about five yeah you know if I had to pick um like I definitely wouldn't like I don't know. You don't want to, you don't want to leave it because sometimes I've seen them and they get neutered and it still doesn't help. Yeah. Like it doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So yeah. for me would be heavy, heavy antioxidants, like a, as much antioxidant as you can get into them. Um, and in our, in our company, that would be like um, phytosynergy and it would be um, the turkey tail. Okay. And I, you know, I am a really big believer in, in giving, um, um, you know, pro, obviously probiotics, the, mm -hmm. the, the right, like the correct ones. Mm -hmm. So I would just start off maybe with phytosynergy with him because okay. of the okay. amount of superoxide dismutase in it and, and seeing if it makes a difference. The, the, um, Gutsooth is really good too because of, believe it or not, things like slippery elm and marshmallow root and L-glutamine that can that can definitely affect the pro the prostate. You know, helps okay. to soothe that and mm -hmm. and calm it down. But just why don't you just does he does he now that he's on the drug does he pee normally or does he squirt pee? Um, he squirt pees. He's always done that, but we didn't know there was a prostate issue till last year so but he's always you know does I mean, it, it's a, does he so he doesn't have a stream like a regular stream it's a little sometimes it's like you know yeah even um, on the drug eh but, mm -hmm. okay so then the he was just in there yesterday he did an ultrasound last week 
And then when we had our appointment yesterday, you know, he did a digital rectal exam and, you know, he said it was just a tiny bit, you know, larger than it should be. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, when you're talking to Andrea, she okay. can talk to you about that too. But for me, I would be looking at lots of like antioxidants, like as, as much of a, getting a not, as much as I could into him that has very strong antioxidant effects. So um, that's different than your recommendations for Fido's energy, turkey tail, gut seed. No, that, those are antioxidants. Okay. Right. But I mean, mushrooms have more than just antioxidants mm -hmm. too. They've yeah. got, you know, polyphenols and they've got mm -hmm. um, tri um, triterpenes and the whole nine yards. Okay. So I would, I would do that before I would neuter them. That's for sure. I would try, mm -hmm. I would try that. Okay. I will. Thank you. And then so it'd much. be interesting to see, I mean, what you would want to look for is there's lots of different, there's so many different herbs for prostate. Like I would, Andre can talk to you about that. There's tons of herbs that you can put okay. them on that, that like that really, really help for, for prostates. Okay, great. And then I you would know because you'll, you, you would get a, a stream, like a straight stream mm -hmm. or less okay. of a, less of an interrupted yeah. stream. Mm -hmm. And, okay. you know, I can think of conium and all different kinds of homeopathic remedies that, that would probably help a lot. Okay. All right. And I would try all of that before I would neuter them. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad that you're saying that. Um, well, just because okay. I've, I've seen it in my clinic, you know, where they get neutered mm -hmm. and it doesn't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's what I said, you know, can, can you guarantee that that's going to fix it? And he said, no, no. And it's like, well, then let's just, you know, do the medicine for now. And I wanted to be able to, you know, look at other things and, and everything, but I didn't realize that um, kind of, and it's not totally intermittent, you know, it's, there's not a cutoff in between when he's peeing, but you can tell there's a difference. It's not just a straight a straight stream, but I had no idea that that was any indication of a prostate issue. He just has always been like that. So I just thought it was yeah. his little quirk. Yeah. Well, try that. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for You're your welcome. time. You're welcome. Thank you. Steph, there's someone that wants to just know if Fido's floor can be used with animal biome. Yeah, I saw that. It uh, can. It can. Okay, great. Thank you. I mean, I would tell Holly, like, make sure that Holly knows, but if she's having a hard time keeping her gut balanced, like it sounds like she's getting animal biome and it's maybe good for a little bit and then it's relapsing. That's mm -hmm. what's happening. I don't know. Um, but yes, I, I, I know a lot of, we have a lot of people that are doing both. She said, yes, Christine. Awesome. Yes. Okay. All but right, it's everyone. Christine, it's important to to check to see if if the if the Fido's flora is is helping. But the other thing I was gonna say is the turkey tail. The turkey tail has a phenomenal ability to colonize to colonize bacteria, like huge, huge amounts. So I would actually do Fido's flora and turkey tail. Um, you're not doing a bunch of different probiotics or anything. You're actually putting in the canine, you're detoxing, putting in, helping with the, the, um, the permeability of the gut to chart so that the, that the bacteria can actually colonize and not seep through the gut lining, which happens lots and lots and lots. They have this wonderful um, plethora of different kinds of diverse bacteria but then it, they don't stay colonized because you're not working on the permeability of the gut. So if you were to try Phytos Flora, I put them on, you put your dog on or your girl on Phytos Flora and the turkey tail, it should really help to, with the permeability and to help the colonization so that they, they, um, they can, you know, set up house. Awesome. Thank you, Julie, Christine. You're welcome. I'm sure you heard all that. If not, you can catch it on the replay. Um, you know what? I'm sorry, but 
We are so far over time tonight. <laughs> right. I might have to call it quits. Uh, hey, All everyone, right. just so everyone knows, we have a really incredible customer success team and you can email them. They'll get right back to you within one business day. Um, and if there's something that our customer success team can't help you with, then the questions go directly to Julie. And if we can't provide resources um, to, to get you on the right track. So the email for that is questions at adoredbeast.com. Please send us a note if you have a question and, and we'll do our very best to help you. Thanks everyone for joining us tonight. Thanks Julie for all your insight. You're welcome. Have a good night, everyone. See you next time.